I'm thankful today that the Lord has put some brothers and some sisters underneath us here at uh, Momentum, I don't say underneath us, but with us here at Momentum Community Church uh, that are vibrant and willing to stand up and to preach the Word of God without pay. Uh, listen, we're not one of those rich churches. If you're an evangelist and you're coming in here asking for a $3,000 offering, you might as well just turn around and get 3,000 feet away from this building because it ain't going to come nowhere near you. Uh, but I'm thankful today that we got men and women that are willing to stand up and teach and preach the Word of God for uh, just the love that Christ Jesus has placed and the salvation that He has given. I'm thankful today for my brother. We've laughed and joked around with him, and uh, we've tried to make him as nervous as possible. Uh, I hope you, hey, have you ever noticed this that we get real nervous? So, like, I watch character traits of people, right? So, I already told the guy, I told the, the guy that's helping with the camera today that this is what Jason's going to do. He's going to get nervous. The first thing he's going to do is he's going to grab his chair and he's going to move it because he's going to say it's going to get his way, but really, it ain't in his way. He's going to step around it anyway, right? But he's going to move it because he's nervous. And then he's going to come up here, like, he's going to run down to where you're at and he's going to get nervous. And he's going to back up. He's going to preach right here in this area for a minute. And he's going to come over here. And he ain't going to be watching really close to this really cool thing where he closes his eyes like this. And just preaches with his eyes. And I said, man, dude, you better have liberty in the Lord today. Open your eyes up and preach the word of God with the fire and the zeal of God. Amen. 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 How was that for introduction, man? Yeah. I got it right. <laughs> Hey, it's good to have good brothers in the Lord, man, and we have some good fun uh, with it. Don't start pointing out all my, you know, I'm going to be here all day. Uh, I got a bunch of them myself, but uh, thankful today, uh, Brother Jason Regal's here uh, with us at Momentum Community Church, and that he's got a fire, a zeal, and an anointing, and a calling that's placed on his life to preach the Word of God. And so let's give him a hand as he comes up today. Jason, come to the Lord today. praise you for your for your word we praise you for your spirit but most importantly we praise you for your son yes. uh, without whom lord we would have a chance in this world or the, the world to come lord father as i speak your word here today lord i pray that it is not my words that i speak it is not my opinions or my or anything in me father but it is of you yes. holy spirit we're asking for you to wash over this place here today lord Oh, Lord, if there be anything that we're battling against here today, Lord, let us lay it at the altar. Let us lay it at your foot here now, Lord. We don't have to come up to this altar, Lord. Let us just lay it down to you today here, Lord. Satan, we bind you now in the name of Jesus. Distraction, we bind you now in the name of Jesus. World, we bind you now in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way here. Holy Spirit, have your way here. And thank you, Jesus, for all that you do in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not going to get political on you guys today because there are things that are happening in this world that have absolutely nothing, and I am going to do these, that have absolutely nothing to do with politics. <laughs> we got things going on in this world today that are all just because they are in the Bible. They are going to happen. We can try to stop it. We can try to move it. We can try to deter it. But when God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So let's just all buckle down. Let's get on our faces. Let's get in our word. And let's just pray to God that we can make it through. That we can hold our own until the, until the Lord comes back. Whether you preach or you meet or you post trip, that's for a whole other teaching. That's for a whole other service. But whether Jesus comes back before the tribulation or during the tribulation or after the tribulation, the word of God is going to become very scarce in this land because they're not because of who's holding president or who is holding the Senate House or anything like that, but because the word of God says that the Holy Spirit is going to pull itself away out of this world. And that we're going to have to hold hold heartily, hold on to God's word in our hearts. 2 Timothy verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 16 says, All Scripture, not some, but all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good word. 
Over in 4, it says, I charge you. He's charging Timothy, but the Word of God is charging all of us. Right. Every single one of us that says, Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom, preach the Word. Don't preach opinion. Don't preach anything else. Just preach the Word. That's all you have to do. It's all right here for you. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and teaching. Here it is. And we're in this time now, I believe. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers that will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful. In all things, enduring afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. There's coming a day and a time, and this isn't, he's not even talking about the world. Because the world doesn't even believe. They may believe in God, but let me tell you somebody else who also believes in God. And that's the devil. Right? The devil kicked him, uh, God kicked him out. The devil knows he was, a, he was the lead worshiper in heaven. His body is made of horns. He led all of heaven's hosts in praise and worship of the Lord. He knows that God is all powerful. He knows that God is who God says he is. Right. But it doesn't mean he's saved. Right. Right. God's got me everywhere. I've been wrestling for two or three days. Me and Nathan have been doing over the, over the phone Bible studies. And I tell you what. I'm just everywhere all the time. But there's going to come a day, ladies and gentlemen, where a lot of people are talking about stock, stockpile your guns and your ammo. Right. I'm telling you to stockpile some Bibles. Right. Yeah. Stop, start stockpiling Woo. some things yeah. where we can show a generation yeah. who are going to be completely and totally void of who God is because we're not teaching our children who God is. We're not teaching our children who the righteousness of God is or, or what it means to be a sinner or what it means to be saved. We're not teaching them anything. We're letting this world just grab a hold of them and be like, this man who thinks he's a woman really is a woman. He won the woman of the year award. It's not even a woman. This is the kind of truth we're teaching our children. Help us, Lord. Come on. So start not only stockpiling the physical Bibles, but start stockpiling the Word of God in your heart. Yes. Yeah. It said, Paul tells us that the, the word first came to us engraved on stones. But now it's supposed to be engraved in our hearts. Right. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be engraved in our, in our hearts? When, when we do lives and stuff, Nathan likes to sometimes look at me and says, and how would you answer that question, Jason? When he puts out some sort of just deep theological questions. But what does it mean to have the word engraved in your heart? It means that the Holy Spirit is coming and made Himself real to you. Yes. It means that He's coming yes. and He's shown, he's shown Christ to you. He, he's shown you who you are. Yes. He's also shown you, shown you who He is. And then you begin to study Him. And not only just to study the Word, and, and I catch myself doing this at times since I study the Word and I'm studying just to preach. Or I'm studying just to be able to win an argument. Or I'm studying, studying it just to, to be able to teach someone something instead of Studying it to apply it to my life and to engrave it on my heart to where to where when the, the enemy brings a temptation or, or brings something towards my way, I can be like, yeah, well, the word of God says this. The word of God says that I have power over my past. And that's where we're going to start getting into our main, main scripture here is because you can go to the most charismatic or you can go to the most mundane or you can go to any kind of church that you want. You can sit in the pew day after day after day and you can hear a preacher and hear a preacher and hear a preacher just all day long. But if the Spirit of God is not there, and I'm not talking about being there in the church or being there in the church. I'm talking about the Spirit of God is here. It's not going to be great. It's not going to change. It's not going to, it doesn't have the power to change your life or the world around you. In Galatians, Chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 11. It says, But I make known to you, brethren, 
that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now he's not talking about the road of Damascus where he got knocked off his mule. And Jesus said, Paul, why do you kick against the pricks? Right. He's talking about Paul finally realized, the Holy Spirit finally came upon him, and he finally realized who he was. He finally realized, just like we finally have to realize who we are compared to an inerrant, righteous, holy God. Who are we? Who are we to be able to stand before God with dirty hands and a filthy heart and say, you are my Lord and you are my Savior. How are we supposed to do that? He says, Lord, I'm nobody. He says, Lord, right down here, in the next, in the next section of verses, in verse 17, it says, For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my, beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. See, he was set, what he's saying here is that before Christ, I thought I was doing a good thing. Right. I thought I was doing a good thing because all of these crazy heretics were, coming, were running around talking about this Jesus, talking about someone who's raised from the dead, talking about this fleshly man who we crucified, supposed to be the Savior of the world, supposed to be the Savior of Jerusalem, but we didn't believe it. So what am I going to do? What is he going to do? Is he going to go around and he's going to kill everybody who says it? Does that sound familiar to anyone? If you speak the name of Jesus, what happens to you when you speak it in power, when you speak it in truth, when you speak it in conviction and you confront somebody and you say, I'm not here to judge you because I am nobody. But let me tell you what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that if you don't repent for this sin, you're going to a devil's hell. Next thing you know, you're offending people. Next thing you know, you're being blasted on Facebook for being a bigger. Or however you want to be, however people want to put it out there for you. But he says, look, I have been that person. Right. But then I met this guy named Jesus. Right. Then I met this power called the Holy Spirit. And he showed me my dirtiness. He showed me my wrongs. And he said, you but I can wash all of that away. I can wash all of that away. Back when I used to, back in the early 2000s when I was walking with the Lord, I met my brother Larry Thompson. We we met in uh, Lawrence County Jail. You know, we were doing good. You know, everybody does good when you're a Christian right. in jail, right? right? Yeah, there's no drugs. There's no alcohol. There's no nothing in there. Right. And you get to read your Bible eight hours a day. You get to pray eight hours a day. Come and on, then you step out in here. You step out in the world. And all of a sudden, life starts happening. Yeah. All of a sudden, this starts happening. And I fail. Yeah. <sighs> Oh. My former conduct, I wasn't a Judist. <laughs> no. I was a drug dealer. Right. I wasn't a Christian. I was somebody that had tasted and seen the glory of God. I had Christ came into my heart. He touched it. He knocked on my door. And I told him, I said, I'll let you in for a little bit. Right. Help us. Boy, 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 when I get back out there on the streets. When I go back out there on the streets, I'm going to go right back to doing what I was doing. Oh, because I hadn't, hadn't got the revelation. I haven't got the revelation of who Jesus was. I haven't got the revelation of oh, Jesus Christ that he has come to renew. That he has come to set free. That he has come to break my chains. I just kept continually going back to those chains. I may have laid him down at the altar, but as soon as Jesus turned his back, I put it back in my pocket. Yeah, come on. Keep it real. Come on. Oh, that's the only thing I can do is keep it real. <laughs> oh. But see, he was zealous for all the wrong things. I was zealous to spray my drugs. I was zealous right. to spray the craziness. When I got out of jail and, and I fell and I decided I was going to rebel against God and I turned to the complete opposite. I was extremely zealous about telling people that God was fake. Yeah. I got was extremely zealous to tell people that Jesus wasn't real. I was extremely zealous saying that this methamphetamine or this marijuana or whatever it is that I had in my pocket was going to make your life okay. 
okay. It was going to give you the energy and the power and the freeness in your mind to be able to do whatever you wanted. I was extremely zealous. But just because you're excited about something, just because you think that you've got the right thing going on, doesn't necessarily make it right. All right, all right. Tell the truth. In verse 15 it says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and he called me through his grace to reveal his son in me. See, guys like me and Nathan, guys like Larry, and, 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 and not just people who come out of extreme drug addiction or, or extreme violence, but everyone here, if you were saved, you have been brought out of something, and he's going to reveal his son in you to where you can go and you can speak the truth of God to people. He's sending us to everywhere. There's so many people that I'm never going to be able to talk to that you can talk to. There's so many people here that my wife can talk to through Messenger that I will never know. She talks to people in the UK. She talks to people in Minnesota that are talking about wanting to try to kill themselves and for some reason felt the need to reach out to my wife. So my wife's able to minister the gospel to them. To tell them that there's hope and to tell them that there is a retribution for the things in their life. That if they end it now without Christ, then there is a place for that. Oh. But it says to reveal his son in me that I may preach among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. So you can see here, here we've got a three step gospel experience here. First, in verses 11 through 12, it says that I become to know and I've got this revelation of salvation. I've got this revelation of Jesus Christ. I've got this revelation and I'm set on fire and I'm starting to learn and I'm starting to figure out who I am. I'm starting to figure out my relationship with Christ and then we drop down and it says that but you know who I was. Right. You know where I come from. You know, Jesus says that a, that a prophet has honor everywhere but his own home. You know, and I'm going to use Larry some more if you don't mind, brother. When you first got saved and you went back to your people, what was the first thing they said to you? If there's anything like they said to me, I'll just say, real. Oh, no, this is, you know, everybody gets Jesus in jail. Everybody tries to get out of prison with Jesus. Right. You know, so, so they start to try to pick your life apart. They're like, well, what about this? Right. You know, they're talking, you know, uh, Paul couldn't even go to Jerusalem. He couldn't even get anybody to introduce him to the disciples because they were scared. Yeah. They, would be, they had been killing Christians. He had been killing Christians. He held the coats of the ones who stoned Stephen to death. Right. So they're like, oh, we ain't messing with this dude. Yeah. So when I got saved, and, then, and I mean, I'm talking when I got really saved, it wasn't just a touch, it wasn't nothing like that. It's like, you know, I still got my issues, don't get me wrong. I've still got my, I've still got, there's always one more thing that I can give up to Jesus and that allow him to have and to fill my life with the truth of his Holy Spirit in replace of. So don't get that twisted. I'm not I'm nowhere near perfect. But people start to pick at you, right? Right. People start to pick at you. You're like, well, what about this just the other day? And then you got people who are like, oh, you can just live any old way you want. You can live any other way you want. Grace. Grace will cover a multitude of sins. Love will cover a multitude of sins. But let me tell you, when I met Jesus, really met Jesus, when I got the revelation of Jesus Christ and what he can do in my life and the lives around me, I had a radical change. The things that I took pleasure in, I tried, I do not take pleasure in anymore. Twisted, turned, walking away the other direction. Right. Grace gives you the power Amen. to not go the way that you used to. Right. Do you still have some baggage? Oh, oh yeah, God. man. Lots of baggage. But one by one, Jesus is taken from me. Yes. yes. Thank you. One by one. And then when I turn around and I'm like, well, I'm going to take that one back for a day. He'll let you have it back. Yeah. He's not going to wrestle you for it. Right. He says, but when you're ready, right. I'll take that baggage from you. Amen. Thank you. So you get the revelation of Jesus Christ. You realize you're a sinner. You realize that 
that there's no work in yourself that you can ever possibly do to make yourself right before God because the Bible tells us that our own righteousness or our own works is as filthy rags that they mean nothing to God outside of Jesus Christ. That you can be the best person in the world. That you can help the homeless. That you can feed the hungry. That you can give all your money away. You can live in poverty because you give all your money. You know, the president... Our still president at this very moment, he's still our president. Right. Amen. Yeah. He gets every single one of his checks away that he gets for being a president. Yep. Will that get him into heaven? No. no. It will not get him into heaven. Only the blood of Jesus will get him into heaven. Amen. That is the only thing. But so you get the revelation that, that there's nothing that I can do. So you get saved. You get born again. You get regenerated. And then you go and start telling people. They start bringing up your past. Even though Jesus tossed those sins in that past as far as the east is from the west. Never to be brought up again before the Lord. People don't forget. People are going to bring it up. People are going to look at you weird. Some people may still not let you in their houses because they remember who you were. Paul's going through the same thing. It said, but then it says, when it pleased God, so he got saved. He goes back and tries to tell people. People bring up his past. He's even beating them to him, bringing up his past himself. And then he drops down and says, after he got saved, and after he started trying to learn about Christ, and learn about what it is that Christ is doing in his life, and what the calling is that he has on his life, he says he didn't run back. To try to talk to people about it. Instead, if you uh, believe it's in, uh, I believe it's in another place in Galatians, it says that he went to the desert for three years to be able to learn from the Holy Spirit because he didn't want to go up to Jerusalem and keep learning the old law, keep learning the old ways of trying to be saved because he says it's right here. Jesus Christ is how to be saved. It's not animal sacrifices. It's not anything that we've done. It's only by faith alone. So he said, I'm not going to go and I'm not going to talk with these guys because I know what they're going to do. Whenever I came back to the Lord this time, it doesn't sound bad, right? But when I came back to the Lord, and I put my face to the ground in my bedroom, and I just said, yes, Lord. I didn't go back to the places where I had ministered before. I didn't go back to the old ideas and, it, you know, that I had someone ask me not too long ago, he said, where do you think you'd be right now if you had never walked away? I said, I don't care right. where I think I might be. All I care about is where God's going to take me now. Right, he said, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, there was a question that was given, uh, that was asked of me. And it said, uh, oh, what did they ask? I was so good too. I guess I'll need to use it. Uh, but uh, he, they asked me, he said, uh, do you still believe in the... Okay, I'll go ahead and use it now. This is going to be a rough one. So, do you still believe that the spiritual gifts are active today? I said, yes, I do. People have accused me of being a cessationist, saying that, that all spiritual gifts are dead, that they don't need to be used today. Here's my thing, and this is why I'm bringing this up right here, because it says, confer not with flesh and blood. My Bible says that God can do all things with anyone at any time that He ever chooses. <laughs> but here's my problem. I do not believe that everyone who says they are working the spiritual gifts, or every doctor that says that they are working the spiritual gifts, are actually working the spiritual gifts as unto God. Amen. And this is where I don't confer with flesh and blood. I confer with the Word of God. Because people will say that you can step outside the Word of God and just start making up spiritual gifts and start making up things that you can do in the Spirit that have absolutely no mention or no, and it's completely contradicting to the Word of God and referring to verses, they say that we can do that because of this verse right here. That we can step out of the authority of God. This is why I don't confer with flesh and blood. This walk is more than posting Facebook memes right. with Christian verses on it. On. This book, this walk 
is more than getting blessed beyond measure. This book, or this life, and this walk, you're going to have people who doubt you. You're going to have people who bring up your past. You're going to have people who just flat out lie on you. Because they see a victory in your life that they do not have, and it makes them mad. And I'm not just talking about lost people. I'm talking about people who are still struggling with some of the things in their lives as a Christian. Right. And they see you getting victory over it. And they just don't believe it because they're not through it yet. So they will just lie upon you. Right. And if that's happening to you today, uh, I'm praying for you. Yeah. Because it happens a lot. Yeah. It happens a lot. But let me tell you that there is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There is power in obedience. There is power in knowing the word of God for yourself. Engraved into your heart. Not asking every single person. Being shaken with every, every wind that comes through. Being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Get in your word. That's why I started this off with those with those about uh, in 2 Timothy because brothers and sisters, there's going to come a time when we don't have this word. There's going to come a time when you're going to need to know and to believe and to have the revelation of Jesus Christ living throughout your entire life. Because when they, if Jesus doesn't come back before the tribulation, there's going to come a time when we're, every single believing Christian is going to be standing in a line, going to a guillotine or going to a fiery squad, and they're going to ask you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord? And it's going to be either you can say yes and die, or you can say no and live. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, I would rather stand before my God saying that I just took a bullet to my head. Proclaiming the truth of the gospel. And I'll live a few more years on this planet and spend an eternity in hell. This world is not our home. We are just passing through. It doesn't matter who our president is or will be. It doesn't matter about anything in this world. The only thing that matters is are you saved? The only thing that matters is are you born again? Have you had that revelation of Jesus Christ in your life? Have you been forgiven of all the things that you have lived for in the past? Is your mind changed toward, towards the things of this earth? Going towards the things of heaven? In Colossians, if I can find this. Colossians chapter 3. You know what, it's almost like the ABCs that you see in your head. Right. I try to find a certain letter. That's the same thing I do with the Bible with the books. All right, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Shake your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears... Then you will also appear with him in glory. We can be so stressed out about what people think about us. We can be so stressed out about, about uh, certain doctrines and certain theologies that we may believe in that other people that, uh, that we didn't grow up with. It said, uh, Paul says, you know, that he was following in the, tradi the traditions of his fathers. We can grow up with a certain with a certain mentality of how things go in the Christian life, the Christian walk, and all of a sudden God God reveals to us that we can have this power, we can have this freedom that, that our parents didn't teach us about. But now we're living in this crazy world that's way worse than the 90s and the 80s that we grew up in, some of us 70s and 60s. Which I'm wondering if the 60s were any worse than the 90s and the and what we're going through now. But it says if we just will put our eyes upon the things of Christ and upon the things of God and what God wants for our life, we don't care who the president is. We don't care that, the, that any of this stuff, the only thing that we care is that we're looking at these people who are writing and pillaging and, and doing all of this craziness, trying to trying to normalize pedophilia, trying to trying to normalize all of this all of this sin. And instead of sitting in judgment, instead of sitting and trying to trying to destroy that stuff, we're just looking at it and we're like, man, I just want to tell you about Jesus. Yeah. I just want to tell you about, about this God that, that, that will forgive every sin. Not just some sin, but all sin. Yeah. You know, as people, we want to try and put a big label on certain sin. Say that one sin is greater than another. But brothers and sisters, sin is sin. That's 
It doesn't matter what it is, and if it's not repentant, and, and if you can't walk, and if you don't try to walk away from it, there's no hope for after here. You know, if you, if you live to be a hundred years old on this earth, that's just a speck of time compared to what your eternity is going to be. Amen. I just want to, I know a brother went up into that, you know, when all this Antifa stuff first came up, he had the same passion. He went up to try to, to try to speak to him about, about Christ. They didn't receive it. They didn't receive him. And I believe that one day when we're sitting before the, before the Lord in judgment, and if you're lost and you're in the line of the goats, I truly believe that there's going to be, it's almost like this screen back here, there's going to be an instance. There's going to be a film of where God's going to show you every single time someone ever spoke to you about the gospel. Yeah. Every single time that that woman come up to you at the grocery store and said, hey, the Lord told me to speak to you about your soul. Let me tell you about Jesus. Or, or every time that you shut the door in it, in a true Christian's face that comes to, to witness to you. Oh. He's going to show you every single time. Every time that Jesus tried to, to reveal himself to you. Yeah. To give you power over something. Yeah. And you said no. Yeah. I'd rather live my life the way I want to live. Right. I want to live my life the way I want to live. And I don't want to be bound by religion. I don't want to be bound by rules. Even though if you're living in the criminal world, you are bound by rules. Right. You are bound by something. Every single day in our lives, we bow to something here tonight, today, folks. Right. We neither bow to ourselves and our own ideas, and our own intellect, our own sciences, or we can bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, King Jesus. Yep. One day, every tongue will confess and every knee will bow. And confess Jesus Christ as Lord. If we don't do it now. <laughs> of our own will. We're going to do it later. We're not going to get the benefits. Of our eternity. And of our glory. Amen. Paul said. He didn't go to Jerusalem. To those who were apostles before him. But he went to Arabia. And returned again to Damascus. When I first got saved. I was scared to death. Like, well, uh, when I got saved in Lawrence County Jail and then I went to prison, I was actually scared to death to go to any church services. Right. Because I had been indoctrinated into uh, certain sects of the, uh, the Christian denominations and I was just scared to death. I didn't want anything to do with that. Oh. I didn't want it to have anything to do with the Jesus that I had known because in my opinion I had known a false Jesus because I knew a Jesus then that left me and forsook me. My Bible tells me he never leaves and he never forsakes. I also served a Jesus that was so condemning and so ready just to send a lightning bolt down on anybody who messes up. I didn't want anything to do with that Jesus either. See, Jesus is looking to reveal himself to you here today. Hallelujah. A real Jesus. A Jesus who glows in the darkest times of your life. A Jesus that can walk on every type of water that you try to put in front of him. He will and he can meet you here tonight, today at this altar. Whether you have been in this walk for 30 years or whether it's been a walk of about 15 seconds, whatever it took to get from there to here and you gave your life to him. He's ready to reveal himself to each and every single one of you. But today, if you give your life to him, or if you rededicate your life to him, or if you've got a new power and a new passion and a new zeal for Jesus Christ today, and you go into the world and you try to tell your family, you're trying to tell the world about this Jesus and everybody shoots you down, you're in good company because he does it, the world does it to every single one of us. Do not be dismayed. Preach the word. Do not be dismayed. Preach the gospel. Be not dismayed. Your time here is that the afflictions that you have here are just light 
compared to the glory in which that you will see when you come see face to face with Jesus Christ after all of this is done. Yes. Tonight, when you go home and you're looking at your Facebook and you're looking at the news and you're seeing all of this chaos and you're seeing uh, and, and you're seeing who this president is going to be or, or who this president is going to be or, or you're going to see these things are going to start happening and these things are going to start happening in your life. And your life and your money and your finances and everything's going nuts. Everybody's pulling the stocks out of the stock market. It's all going nuts. But guess what, kid? Jesus is still the King of Kings hey! and the Lord of Lords. And you have no fear because He is going to come back for you one day. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So if you do not know Him, him here tonight or here today, I keep thinking it's night time. If you do not know Him here today, I urge you, I beseech you, and I ask you, and I beg you, please, do not leave this place unsaved. Do not leave this place unregenerated and washed by the power of the blood. If you're struggling here today with your faith, if you're struggling here today with what God may have upon your heart to do in life, but you're just scared because everyone around you says, well, that's just nuts. That's crazy. God would never call you to do that. But you know in your heart, and, and it, it lines up with the Word of God, and, and He says, this is what I want for you. If, if, if you're battling with that here today, come to the altar and ask God for His strength. Yeah. Ask God for His power. Yeah. If you've got loved ones that do not know Christ and that are hooked on drugs or hooked on, or just don't know Jesus, and, they just, and they've got everything that they need in this life. They've got money, they've got a home, they've got a car, they've got a family, but they don't got Jesus. Yeah. And you need to pray for them. Oh. Come up and pray. Ask God to give you the power. Ask God to give you the words. Ask God to give you that, that ability to be able to speak to Him and ask Him. And just be able to flow through you because it's not the words that we say that are going to get people saved. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through us, pricking their heart, breaking down the barriers and saying, I want you, son. You don't have to be poor. You don't have to be a drug addict to need Jesus. You can be the most wealthiest man in the world. Have every single thing and still go straight to hell. It's Jesus, guys. It's all about Jesus. It's not about theology. It's not about doctrine. It's about Jesus. We need to get it back to the simplicity of the walk. The simplicity of who it is. And it's someone who came here, left his throne for you. Every single one of you, he left heaven. He came down to be born of a baby, of a virgin, a little baby that, that needed swaddled, that needed fed, that needed, that needed to learn to walk. He did every single walk of this life as a man. So that he can know every single struggle. That you go through. Yes. You cannot disappoint God. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows everything. If you think you've disappointed God. Get on up here and pray. Because it's not possible. He's an omnipotent God. He knows everything. If you're here and you're just struggling with your prayer life. Struggle with mine. If you're here today and you're struggling with finances, or if you're here and you're struggling, you don't know how you're going to make ends meet, or you don't know, you don't know if your if your loved one's ever going to make it home, come up and pray. Just lay it down at the altar. We cannot battle this world. We cannot battle these things in our life on our own. If we could, Jesus came for nothing. If we could save ourselves with our good deeds and our law, and if that. If we could do that on our own, Jesus didn't have to take the wrath of God upon his soul and upon his body. He did He would have descended into the earth before he ascended up into heaven for absolutely no reason. You cannot do it on your own. You cannot save yourself. You cannot do enough good deeds to save yourself. From the storm to the trial. Rise up out of your head. Rise up out of your own shambles. Rise up out of the ass that the world is beating down into. And rise up as a victorious child of God here today.